everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching the first take performance of More Than Words by Hitsuji Bogaku. I'm excited to check this group out. I've been doing a little bit of reading up on them and I read that they are a trio that originally met during their freshman year of high school and they're from Tokyo. But I mostly know them for Jujutsu Kaisen season two for the Shibuya incident since they do the outro for that. I have not yet heard the full version of the song uh, nor have I seen this first take version either. So I figure we knock out two birds with one stone and watch this version. Before we get into this guys, feel free to check out my YouTube memberships they're only a dollar and you get early access to videos like these and also early access to my anime reactions. Let's do this. Oh, cool guitar. That looks like a seafoam green jaguar. Your mm. voice is so clean. Sounds so good, especially her guitar tone. There's a subtlety in getting that, that dirty guitar tone. I'll talk more about that after the performance. Wow, she has to take on a lot of responsibility in this song. Switching the different guitar tones, switching up the rhythm that she's picking those strings. And then singing on top of that. Really great lyrics, too. Really relates to the vibe of Jujutsu Kaisen, what's been happening in that show. Hmm. I like those high notes.
I love this like crescendoing of how gritty the instruments are getting. There's a lot of subtleties going on with the instruments that all of them are pulling off together. It's really impressive. So I have a little extra to say about this than I think than usual. And it's mainly because of the guitar riff that they start off with. Uh, it's actually throughout most of the song. Um, it's all the clean tones that you're hearing at the very beginning of the song. And it's just kind of like this reoccurring theme that goes throughout uh, most of the verses. Some of the same chord progression throughout the choruses too. And the reason being is that I have written that riff before. I wouldn't necessarily find it to be like this big hidden secret on a guitar. So I'm not necessarily saying that, oh, I've written that before, so I'm a big deal. It's just really interesting to see where other artists take the same riff. But what I also find interesting is that whenever I played the riff, I played it much different in a different spot on the guitar than she did. So I initially was really interested in just observing how she's playing it. Because first off, she's putting a capo at the very first fret, but then it also makes me wonder what her guitar is tuned to. I would actually be surprised if it was tuned standard. I typically play in drop D tuning, but we'll have a rare occurrence in which the self-proclaimed musician will do a musician thing. We'll play guitar right now. Also messed around with this riff too so but i actually usually play it as a half step up so usually my version of the riff would go like this so a bit different but it's really cool with the direction that they went with it overall and this is where her version of this riff where she plays it is actually superior to where i do because she's reaching these higher notes And it's just not realistic for me to reach those notes playing it the way that I am, which is probably why she plays it the way she does. Just physically impossible for me because I have to play the root notes here, but also play these higher notes. I also like to point out again just how tricky it is to pull off these sorts of guitar tones whenever you're doing performances like these. Because it's easy enough to do just a clean tone with a little bit of reverb in the beginning, but then when you have to kind of take it up a notch and put in some of that grit without just going straight into overdrive, it's really difficult to just pull that off while trying to maintain a level of enough clean tone to be able to articulate notes but also get enough grit to where you're giving it a little bit more attitude. And there's a lot of subtleties happening with the drummer as well. Near the end, they were kind of intensifying how hard they were hitting the cymbals too. So, because at the very beginning, they're being very gentle and there was an added intensity in the way that Moika was also hitting her strings near the end too, because I suspect not only was there a reverb effect, but there's a little bit of a delay in there too. It's very subtle, but I think it's there. The harder you're gonna hit those strings, it's like yelling louder down a tunnel and hearing all the reverberation there. So if you're going to be going at it much harder, then you're going to hear a more intensified reverb and also more intensified delay that kind of help extends the reverb at the same time. That's kind of why both effects go a bit hand in hand. It was also fun to see the settings on uh, Moika's guitar as well. She's playing on a Fender Jaguar. I will say that probably 98% of guitar players I ever run to, most of us don't know what all the switches do on a Jaguar. <laughs> and so from what I saw, it looked like she was predominantly leaning towards more of her neck pickup, which gives her a much more warmer tone on her guitar. So when she's playing those clean notes, they have a bit more body to them. But this was a really fun performance to check out just to hear where else they went with the riff. And to also learn something new myself as a guitar player to be shown, hey, that riff you're playing could be done easier if you just had a capo. But that's about it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Uh, let me know what you want me to check out next. And I'll see you guys next time.